Kertasi? I assume that's how you pronounce that. Entire. Oh, it's only got one. How sad. Poor Kertasi. Norexa. Norexa is an unremarkable methane ammonia ice giant with a small family of icy moons. Don't call it unremarkable, it's beautiful. <laughs> it is likely that the Kertasi system has additional worlds earlier in its history, but these have been swallowed up by the aging giant star. Kertasi is an elderly, metal poor population 2 star, broadly similar to Arcturus. Oh, it's an old planet. <laughs> uh, orbital distance. Oh, the star is old, but I guess the planet must be old then too. Orbital distance 6.17 AU. Orbital period 2.4. 2.4 Earth years, I can read. Radius 42,214 kilometers, day length, and 19.2 Earth hours. Alright, nothing here. Onwards. Uh, that's it for Kertasi. Sorry we couldn't stick around longer. Kalabsha. Kalabsha. Let's go. Oh, this is a small one too. Let's try this big guy over here first. Tefnut. <laughs> I like that name. Tefnut. That's a funny name. A hydrogen helium gas giant, Tefnut is home to a helium-3 collection and the nearest refueling station to the Nubian Expanse's mass relay. As such, it is a major gateway to the Virgin Terminus systems and has become famous for its hospitali hospitality industry. <clears throat> Tefnut's motto is known throughout the galaxy. Like home, only better. <laughs> oh, why can't we visit there? Visitors can stay at an expensive, at expansive resort stations, watch locally produced entertainment, buy mind-affecting substances not welcome in Citadel space, and rent companionship. Oh, so it's like space Las Vegas. Interesting. <laughs> Resources are stripped from the yam at substantial discount. Shipped in from stripped. Where did I get? We know where I got that from, okay. <laughs> Resources are shipped in from Yom at substantial discounts, allowing the small space stations to have surprising luxuries such as edible anthropods and large amounts of fresh water. Population, 33,810, spread across five space stations. Orbital distance, 4.1 AU. Orbital period, 8.3 Earth years. Radius, 57,010 kilometers. Day length, 8.8 .8 Earth hours. Poor. Aw, Tefnut's no good. Alright. Nothing from Space Vegas. What's this one? Yom. <laughs> oh, are you the stripper, Yom? Yeah. Yom is the resource stripper. <laughs> Over 90% of its surface covered in oceans, Yom is a habitable nitrogen-oxygen world, but its extremes can be quite hospitable hostile to sapient life. The heat from its extremely long days reaches dangerous levels, ranging from 24 Celsius at night to 53 in the afternoon in the temperatures, temperate zones. Hurricanes run unchecked across the oceans, with winds reaching up to 250 kilometers per hour. While there are some anthropod-like animals, the predominant forms of life are various kinds of toxic algae blooms. Uh, that stretch hundreds of kilometers across. However, other biohydrocarbon algae blooms are suitable for use as biofuel, and farming the green gold forms the backbone of Yam's economy. Colony founded 2170 CE, population 488,504, capital New Karnak. Orbital distance 2.0 AU, orbital period 2.8 Earth years, radius 6,501 kilometers, day length 69.6 .6 Earth hours, atmosphere pressure 1.8 Earth atmospheres, surface temperature 34 Celsius in the temperate zone, and surface gravity 1.1 G. Yam is moderate, so this system sucks too. We won't come here. Alright, is that it for the Nubian expense? That is. Man, we're just not finding anything. Just lots of systems with only like one or two planets in them. Alright, let's refuel. Five fuel. And we'll go somewhere else. 
plot mass really jump. What's this one? Hades Nexus. I'm sure there'll be something here. There has to be. This is the Hades Nexus. As I recall in the first game, everything happened in the Hades Nexus. Let's try this guy. Triodia. A moderately sized gas giant with an icy core, Triodia's hydrogen and methane atmosphere gives it its blue a bluish color. It has 14 moons named after Asari virtues. Interesting. Alliance Bulletin. Geth have been encountered in the Hecate system. All civilian traffic is prohibited. Orbital distance 4.8 AU. Orbital period 10.5 Earth years. Radius 27,206 kilometers. Day length 18.7 Earth hours. Sounds like we might be dealing with some Geth eventually in this area. Haven't seen Geth in a long time. Kerr. A dry, desolate planet, Kerr is temperate but supports little life above the microscopic level. Its Earth-like temperatures and ga gravity make it an appealing place to build habitation hideaways, attracting Batarian slavers and criminals who can't afford more luxurious safe houses on other planets. Its forgiving nitrogen helium atmosphere makes EVAs possible with a minimal amount of equipment. A breathing mask and warm clothing is usually sufficient. Mining and other legitimate activities are few and far between on Kerr. The planet's crust is largely free of precious metals, instead producing kilometers upon kilometers of dolomitic limestone, calcite, and gypsum. Alliance Bulletin. Geth have been encountered in the Hecate system. All civilian traffic is prohibited. Orbital distance 2.2 AU. Orbital period 3.3 Earth years. I see we like the repeated numbers. Radius. 6,420 kilometers, day length 61.7 earth hours, atmosphere pressure 1.2 earth atmosphere, surface temperature negative 4 celsius, surface gravity 1.1 g. Oh, we got 1.1, 2.2, 3.3, yay! Ooh, it's rich. What are you talking about? It doesn't have anything in the crust. It's rich. Oh, where's the last planet? I guess it's on this belt. Where's oh, there it is. I found you. What are you doing hiding back here? Bothros. A rock and ice planet, Bothros is home to a scientific curiosity. Evidence of a primate life primate-like spacefaring civilization was found frozen in its equatorial ice, ranging from melted fragments of metal to preserved remains of cr the creature still wearing suits for extravehicular activity. Interesting. Further exploration revealed that their habitation centers were vaporized by orbital bombardments from railgun-like rail weapons hitting with a force of approximately 120 kilotons of TNT. Hmm, I wonder what that could have been. Only those that fled or happened to be away from the habitats were preserved in the ice where they died of asphyxiation. This unknown species did not come from Asteria, but scientific teams are looking for evidence that they visited there. It is difficult to believe that they would colonize a frozen rock while like Both world frozen rock like Bothros and ignore a lush garden world. Their world their world of origin is also a mystery. I wonder what they look like. Can we get a picture? There should be like a little attachment with a picture. Alliance Bolton and Geth have been encountered in the Hecate system. All civilian traffic is prohibited. Orbital distance 8.5 AU, orbital period 24.8 Earth years, radius 7,191 kilometers, day length 51.0 Earth hours, atmosphere pressure trace, surface temperature negative 142 Celsius, and surface gravity 1.5 G. This one is also rich. Sounds like Hades Nexus is a good place to visit if we need supplies eventually. Alright, let's head to whichever one of these is closer. Palm Yacht. You are the winner. Enter. Alright, what you got for us, Pomyat? Anything in the belt? Aha, there is. Volkov. Whew! A dwarf planet, Volkov has a thick atmosphere of nitrogen and krypton. Home to a thriving iridium mining community, Volkov's reputation is summed up as rich but dangerous. <laughs> Pirates often lurk behind Volkov's two moonlets. Zenevieza and Alenia, uh, and cripple <coughs> freighters leaving the atmosphere. To make matters worse, Volkov sits on the Chazov belt, 
a field of asteroids and other small bodies which leads to frequent meteor strikes on the planet. Meteor-related casualties remain rare, but on Volkov, the chances of such death are high enough that they are factored into insurance premiums. Huh, <laughs> interesting. Death by meteor strike. Population, 3,800. Uh, orbital distance, 8.5 AU, orbital period at 24.8 Earth years, radius 1,705 kilometers, day length. 68.2 Earth hours, atmosphere pressure, 3.7 Earth atmosphere, surface temperature negative 59 Celsius, and surface gravity 0.1 G. Volkov is also rich. Exciting. Alright, anything else in the belt? There should be, because it looks like there's four planets in this system. Four explorable things. Ah, there's a f the fourth one is in here. It's this. He's hiding. I can barely see him. Alright, let's see this. Patasiev. Uh, a rock planet encased in frozen oceans, Patasiev is notable for the largest written message ever created by a human being. What? Andre Kobzar, a disgruntled miner whose fortunes were spent prospecting for Ezo, used the mass accelerator cannon of a local mercenary group's A61 Mantis gunship to carve a 208 <laughs> kilometer long message in the ice saying uh, I'm not even going to try to read that Russian uh, saying that Russian for there's nothing here <laughs> wow somebody was upset the message can easily be seen from space ironically the message itself intended to discourage future colonists now draws small tourist crowds why can't I see it I want to see it well, they should have, like, put it into the texture on this planet somewhere. Orbital distance, 4.2 AU. Orbital period, 8.6 Earth years. Radius, 6,351 kilometers. Day length, 18.9 Earth hours. Atmospheric pressure, trace. Surface temperature, negative 118 Celsius. And surface gravity, 1G. I don't see the message. <laughs> I want to see the message. That would be funny. Alright. Let's try this one. Drobo Drobvolsky. Dobrovolsky. Sorry. <laughs> I lost a syllable in there. Another near-Earth-sized rock planet without much atmosphere, atmosphere to speak of, Dobrovolsky is home to the Altai Mineral Works, a local extraction company noted for its success in ESO refining. The planet itself provides aluminum for local fabricators, which are churning out habitats at an astonishing rate for a system that has no garden planets. With its ore supply coming all the way from the Shiel system, Dobrovolsky is held up as the proof of the miner's cliché. Where there's ESO, there's an economy. Orbital distance, 2.3 AU. Orbital period, 3.5 Earth years. Radius, 6,972 kilometers. Day length, 59.1 Earth hours. Atmosphere pressure, 0.21 Earth atmospheres. Surface temperature, negative 46 Celsius. And surface gravity, 0.9 G. Anything interesting? Guess not. Just a lot of resources. All right, now who's this one hiding out over here? Komarov. First charted by the Asari, but colonized by humans, the Pamyat system is home to Komarov, an Earth-sized body near the star. It has little atmosphere to speak of, but this has not stopped exploration by Romo miners, who have recovered iridium for the planet's crust. Um, from the planet's crust, I should say, not for the planet's crust. I imagine the planet's crust is doing just fine. Orbital distance, 1 AU. Orbital period, 1 Earth year. Radius, <coughs> Earth years, 6,861 kilometers. A day length, 39.6 Earth hours. Atmospheric pressure trace. Surface temperature, 55 Celsius. Surface gravity, 1.3 G. All right. Let's go to this last system here and hope that it provides something to do. Show what's going on. Give us something fun. <laughs> Only one planet. <laughs> of course. Anomaly detected. Yes! Gay Hinnom. 
A near atmosphereless, tidally locked planet orbiting a red dwarf star, Gehinnom was the first place human explorers discovered a dedicated Prothean burial ground. While a few sites were saved for posterity, Eldfell Ashland Mining successfully lobbied to scout the rest of the planet for Element Zero and soon was embroiled in, the scan in a scandal. Mining teams were looting grave sites, searching for Ezo and other treasures, and many got rich off of the so-called cemetery business. While EAM officials brought uh, a stop to the looting, its mining teams remained on the planet, prospecting the unclaimed territory and taking their ore to the Pamyat system for refining. Travel advisory armed conflicts have broken out between miners and scientists staking claim to the Prothean ruins. Visitors are advised to employ security while exploring unknown regions of the planet. Population 11,503. Orbital distance 0.83 AU, orbital period 0.8 Earth years, radius 2,379 kilometers, day length 0.8 Earth years, have a zero pressure trace, surface temperature 35 Celsius in the habitable zone, and 108 Celsius dash, uh, or slash I should say, <coughs> negative 120 Celsius, <coughs> sorry, Celsius <coughs> in the uninhabitable zones, surface gravity 0.1 G. All right. Where's this distress signal? Ooh. Sounds like a Quarian. Sounds like a Quarian. Let's go find out what's going on. Anomaly detected. Surface scans show evidence of a shipwreck meeting Quarian design specifications. Ha, I was right. Identity of ship unknown. Number of life signs detected in vicinity uncertain. Local wildlife may interfere with accuracy of biological scan. Let's go find out what's going on. Alright, who are we gonna take? So if local wildlife is the problem and not Gath, then Tally's not gonna be much use. And she got to play around a whole bunch last time with the mechs. So let's take Zaid and we'll take... I think Morden. Alright. Let's do some stuff. I don't care what my equipment is. It should be fine. Aha! Varen. Great. My favorites. All right, what do we got? I'm detecting a single Quarian life sign in your location. Judging by the suit's erratic readings, the Quarian is badly injured. Oh, I'm great. also detecting multiple native life signs near your landing site. Okay, so we've got an injured Quarian that we assume need to rescue. And where are these personal logs? Oh, over there. I'm just trying not to trigger anything nasty just yet. 